I believe that people will always want to be in a place with other people. I believe the work environment, while be it always evolving, it will always be a place where people want to come and be together. It's people like being in communities. So I think what will be relevant is always the workplace. What will change is what the workplace actually is. What do you want somebody, your employees, somebody coming in from the outside to feel about you, how you treat them? What is the experience you want to demonstrate to them? And we can do that through the built environment. I think I had been tired of corporate America for the short stint of a year that I was living in it and sort of decided that start my own thing was a good option and came to my dad and said, Hey, how about that, that space downstairs? What do you think? And he said, yeah, for 200 bucks a month, you can have it. What do you want to do? And we said, what about interior design? And he said, ugh. Oh. Kind of like scoffed at that concept, but, but went along with it. So you just started to realize that over time at the corporate setting, really the Fortune 500s is kind of where we were going to set out on our journey and it was really where we fit. What we realized, though, when we started Bocon, was there was this disconnect between architects who kind of were designing buildings without a lot of thought about what was going on on the inside. You know, what were people really doing on the inside of buildings? And you'd find these triangular spaces. It's like, well, what do you, how do you put furniture in there? And, well, didn't you think through this when you were drawing the building? And the reality was that no one really cared because they just ended up to be that way because it made sense from the outside. And then we started to say, what's the vision of this business? And how do you link that vision of the business to the physical environment? Because really, after, after people, a business's greatest asset is, is, is their built environment. So how could we make that, that work more for a business than just being painted walls. And then the magic is revealed. In the old days of architecture, or the old school days of architecture, the architect would walk in with their black cloak and they would, you know, whisk it around and they'd say, this is my idea and this is what I came up with to address your problem. And I think these days it, it's much more collaborative in terms of really getting into your client's needs and wants and mind and understanding what what is it that we can do to really help raise the bar, raise, you know, move the needle? What we do is try to really put them at ease, that you have professionals around you. If we can't do it, we're going to be the first ones to raise our hand and say, you know, we need help and we're going to pull somebody in who's an expert at this specific aspect to it. So we're trying to feel that we are a partner to them from the first time we meet them through the final punch list to the second, third, and fifth, and tenth projects that we hopefully do with these folks. We're learning that the clients that we really get the most benefit from are those clients that are willing to lift the hood open and really show us what's the components of their company and they're not worried about what we're going to find, but also solve problems, and make companies better and make relationships better and make you know, end products for people's lives a little bit better. There's a lot of people in our business that'll sort of go to the drawer and say, oh, you're a manufacturing company, so you should have this size workstation and you should have this many collaborative zones. See, we don't do that. We start with people in a very personal and deeply engaged way, and we listen to you. So workplace strategy in our world is really the discovery of what an organization does, what their people do, how their culture works. 
The role that we play at the beginning of a project really starts to set the tone for the relationship that an organization has with us, right? So we go in, we are the consultants, we are the listeners and the understanders and the learners, really being the link between the project team and the client side because they're saying things in a language that only they understand and we understand kind of the language and the business of design and so we're really blending those two worlds together at that point. I think the main thing in home office, when you enter their large atrium space, they have a very large light fixture. I think maybe a scaled down version of that in here could work really well and would kind of connect you to that feeling of home office. You know, this client has 170 years of history. Um, it's, so we want to make sure that we're really having the employees feel that sense of history in the mm -hmm. space, that they're tying into it and that they feel that they're a sense of that community. Mm -hmm. um, and, but that they're also looking towards the future. So that's why I think, you know, as we're designing, keeping those historical elements in place, we want to make sure that we're tying the brand and the history in. So like we were saying, mark that entry sequence here. And maybe we don't look at ourselves as a vendor. We're not a vendor. I'm not a commodity. Um, yes, you can go buy architectural services from somebody else. But what we bring to the table is partnership. When we are in a partner relationship, and we have a thousand of them, um, what we can do for a client is limitless. Um, you're, you're not fighting over every nickel. You don't have, you're not being treated as, as a commodity. And uh, we bring something different to the game, uh, which is of value. We help clients and corporations transform their businesses. I believe that every single one of our projects that we do could be considered a legacy project based on the context in which it's, it's placed. One restaurant leads to two restaurants which leads to three restaurants, and then a housing project, and then a business incubator, and then, and it just, it adds, and before you know it, you, you have a neighborhood, which really changes the fabric of a city. And I think all of those things coming together creates neighborhoods. Neighborhoods create communities, communities create cities. Cities bring new blood in, get people to move around, get different perspectives, live in different areas. And when you open your eyes and you're in a different place, in a way that you can let your guard down, you see different things. And, uh, and, and when you see those things, you experience that energy, you wanna be a part of it. It creates community. They themselves see that they are about to embark on a really important transformational relationship. There's a lot of trust in here. They're entrusting money, they're entrusting their resources, time in some ways are entrusting their future success of their company in our hands. No matter what we're doing, we have to create a relationship. We have to meet them where they are, build that construct of trust so that we can create together, dream together, and materialize together. Part of what's really exciting about what we can bring to our clients is a solution and a future that can roll with change, roll with disruptions in the business marketplace that our clients face. And so for our designs to be a bit more future friendly, a bit more change ready is really key. And so that's it's just another dimension of value that I really feel is essential to have cooked into anything that we're doing here, because it's the world in which we live. When you see something that's built, whether it's an interior, an exterior, or a public space, and you see the full spectrum of humanity playing out on that tableau that you've created, all these different types of behaviors that all sort of uh, come together to weave the story of life. It, it's when it grabs a hole of your heart and your brain, and it takes you on a journey that you could never imagine, and best, takes you on a journey that you really can't explain. When you don't settle for business as usual, when you don't settle for formulas out of a bag, it's, it's alive and it's authentic. And that's like, that's the sweetest gift. Volcon actually was a part of our team from the very beginning, because when the company made a decision that we were going to look to what we were going to do with our headquarters. We were in an old existing wonderful building that actually we ended up selling 
So we engaged in a process of understanding what our team was, you know, what our associates needed in the way of office space, what would be the, a great work environment for them. We were also very focused on how are we going to attract great associates over time, because the company's really only as good as its people, and its people spend an awful lot of time in the work environment. Where are we going to locate one floor, multiple floors, a building we're going to own and develop ourselves, space we're going to rent? All of those decisions were decisions that they'd been a part of. And as Vocon helped lead us through that discussion with our associates, it became pretty obvious that they were really, particularly the younger people in the company, where they'd been part of successful open office environments. And even though there's sort of a pejorative around that term, if you understand what it really can be, and I think what Vocon delivered for us, it can be a very exciting new kind of environment. So we ended up with, with that kind of decision, fundamental decision about the nature of the space, the character of the space, and then how it was going to work within this multi-story shell. One of the things that they saw, I think, Bob and Lindsay and the team here saw the opportunity to, to open the space up. And it wasn't just open office. It was the fact that, it, you know, when you're on the 24th floor or the 25th floor or the 31st floor, you've got staggering views. So we defined our space. We have a cafe. We have a pocket park on every floor. We have small huddle rooms, which again, are very much sort of neighborhood parks. So we really created a sense of, of real estate, if you will, in the way the space works. And we're excited with it. But the design of uh, Dealer Tire was, was interesting because we took an old building that had a lot to give us. It had a wonderful ceiling structure, a waffle concrete slab. And so we had to leave a lot of it because they were receiving historic tax credits. Uh, but over here is the new entrance we developed over here, where you come in over, over in this area and you rotate left to meet the receptionist who's at a desk that looks like a tire. Uh, and then basically they're on access throughout. We created a new kind of common social area for them to interact. I'm really surprised at how well this is being used. A lot of the conference rooms over here, you access from this back hallway rather than off the, the main. And all you see is through the glass is activity and motion. And I think it's a great environment. It's the journey that's different here. Our journey involves a lot of very personal moments. And I believe our projects are reflective of that journey because there's just a lot more personal moments that lead to a better project outcome. So it's not just looking at the building. It's like we're looking at the building, we're looking at the interiors, we're looking at the system, we're looking at how the program fits into sort of the way their organization functions. But it's, it isn't one size fits all. Not in this day and age. There are any number of things that space can do to people that, that that's timeless and, and finding the combination of meeting program and budget and just the basic technology of how you put a building together and providing that right sensibility for the particular client the way they want to feel in their space that's the magic really in terms of what we do so i started in this industry 24 years ago and I started by drafting by hand on a drafting board. It's been recent that we've added VR technologies, but when we use tools like VR, when we're building in 3D, and a client can put on the VR goggles, and they can not only see their space, they can feel their space, it, it's super powerful. It has allowed us to go further, faster. Computers can think, computers can problem solve, but bringing the personal experience and the personal relationship to that project is something that's not going to change. We're all people. The reality is, is people want to be with people. 
people don't want to do everything online or do everything in a, in, a, in a virtual world. How we get to the end of the game, how we deliver a project is still relationship-based. It's people-based. We're designing for people. Uh, people inhabit our spaces. People live in, work in, play in our spaces. And, and that's it's one of our values. It's, it's who we are and what we do. And that, in my opinion, won't change. In this building, the people here are this incredible mix that I share my time, my life, my stories, my experiences with. And then our clients, I mean, they are my family. We've had clients for 25 years. So at the end of the day, what am I most proud of? Relationships. And the relationships I've built, Paul's built, the group here, our leadership team, and everybody from soup to nuts, that's, that's our core, that's our strength, that's what we jump off of. When you get us, you get not just me, not just Deb, not just Denver, Manheis, or any of our leadership, you get the entire company. And our jobs, and my job in particular, is to kind of guide that ship to make sure you have the right people in place, available, and that they're, they're working their butt off. And we're here to listen, and we're here to continue to work hard to improve your life in some way through the spaces that we create.